Welcome to Story Talks, where we discuss the practices that engage, motivate, develop, retain, and attract people to businesses. We'll give you principles and tools based on real-world stories to leverage listening and storytelling to become a better leader and management professional. Story Talks is produced by Narrative, a company that focuses on personal storytelling for business. Welcome to Story Talks. Here is the podcast from Narrative, where myself, Jerome DeRoy, and my co-host, Julianne Ryan, discuss the ways that businesses engage their employees and customers and whoever their stakeholders are. And we're always interested in how storytelling and listening practices can help increase engagement. So in this podcast, We always try to give you practical tips that you can implement in your workplace right after you've listened to this. And today will be no exception. Julienne, do you want to kick us off here? (laughs) I do, um, because I've been doing, like many of you out there, a lot of listening and watching what we've seen evolve on the world front with um, amazing leadership example in a time of crisis. And it's President Lezinski with um, Ukraine, which we all know his name by now, and what we've been observing with with the team and the actions he's taken. And I thought it was a moment, that an important moment for both Jerome and I to step back and look at what elements exist and what lessons we could draw from that. So Jerome, some of your reactions as we're watching just, not just him, but the rest of his organization come forward. Mm. Thanks for that. Thanks. And thanks for bringing that up. Uh, Because I think like everyone else, I've been glued to the uh, headlines and, Mm. and just really, you know, being very affected by it. Um, it, You know, I I grew up in France, and my father was born in, uh, in 1938. So he was, you know, seven years old when uh, the Germans left France and, um, and has vivid memories uh, of that. And clearly, you know, and, and just the whole invasion and, and because they, he wasn't, he stayed in France with his family and, you know, they had to hide and all of those things. And so uh, is very traumatic experience and something that I remember growing up would come up, of course, but the assumption was always that this would never happen again, even through the eighties, uh, you know, through the cold war, the end of the cold war. And then of course, through the nineties, it felt like well, this will absolutely never happen mm-hmm. again because now we're done uh, with, with all of that. And in Europe, you know, and so, so I, so I found it to be very personally affecting and scary um, to know that this is kind of happening right at the doorstep of of the EU. And so that's one one piece of it. The other uh, piece that I've been struck by, as you alluded to, is is the leadership of the Ukrainian President Zelensky. I, I think that, you know, he he's really kind of shown something pretty uh, unique. Uh, I think there were there were lots of assumptions that were made that perhaps, you know, given the chance uh, to escape, he would or given it exile, he, he might. Mm-hmm. Um, and, 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 and that it would almost be, on my part, understandable. Um, mm-hmm. And yet that's not what he that's not what he did at all and and actually refused uh, exile despite the numerous offers and decided to stay there despite the fact that there's a target on, on him and his family. So mm-hmm. that then caused me to reflect on you know, leadership in business. And there's this book called Leaders Eat Last by Simon Sinek, uh, which okay. came out a, a few years ago. And, and um, you know, that's, that's someone that I often refer to because he's got some great Kind of rules and guidelines for leaders and has been very, very successful. For anyone who's interested, they should check out Simon Sinek, S I N E K, Google that and his TED talk uh, about start with your why and even leaders eat last. All of his mm-hmm. TED talks are really great and his books are really great. But this one in particular, because the idea came from uh, him doing a, a tour in Afghanistan, he visited, uh, uh, he, stayed, he stayed, I think, with the army for two or three months to study what they were doing and how they behaved and especially leadership. And what he noticed is that as a matter of practice, Mm -hmm. your leaders always eat last and let everyone else uh, eat first. Mm -hmm. And so there's a great metaphor in business for that, 
which is that, you know, you as a leader have to kind of sacrifice your own time and what you, mm -hmm. and perhaps your ego and set that aside and let everyone else speak first, eat first, give their ideas first. And what you're doing is you're really listening. And, and then you take all of that into account. And the result of this kind of leadership is that people feel heard and they're mm -hmm. motivated beyond um, you know, just simply performing their goals. And we're seeing this in Ukraine. People are, mm -hmm. are incredibly motivated to defend their land, which is not surprising if you know the history of that country, but I, it would have been a very different story uh, if Zelensky had chosen to, to leave the country Mm -hmm. uh, even even after a few days and seeing how it's going, if he had chosen to do that, it, it'd be really, really different. I don't think people would be as motivated uh, as as we're seeing now and would be such a thorn in the side of the of the Russian troops. And not just the people who are staying is the number of people who are coming back or mm -hmm. going there yeah. from different countries to yeah. leave. So that that did institute a, a whole different way of looking at the situation and the urgency of it. Um, and I like what you were saying about the, um, the rooms, like we're watching a lot of rooms and a lot of movements as he's touched base and come out of the bunker to, to visit. But that whole idea of taking information, synthesizing it, being open to the feedback, to hear the truth, because I know many of us have worked with folks that say, oh, I want you to talk, but not really. Uh, you know, they didn't want to really hear the truth of what was going on or multiple different perspectives. So I think that is very, very important. And then, you know, before we, we started the session, I mentioned like that situation with the trains, with the uh, leaders that are running the, the, the transportation program, how they're traveling with the trains and staying with them. So there was a trickle down effect of once he initiated his leadership style in plain sight, how that, you know, impacted how other people were cho choosing to lead and solve problems. So I think this, um, we are all looking for resolution and this to end uh, soon because enough has happened. Um, but it will, it is a game changer on so many levels about how we're going to look at leadership going forward. Mm, yeah. And I think what you're saying too, you know, uh, to do that in plain sight and, and sort of mm -hmm. showing everyone, he's essentially modeling uh, this leadership style, you know, it, it's not it's not a quiet thing. It's mm -hmm. something that um, has to be broadcast, has to be public, so that it has that ripple effect that you're talking about. That trickle down effect can't happen if you don't communicate about that, and if you don't have people around you that are going to be able to carry on that vision uh, in in a time of crisis is is probably the. Uh, you know, the euphemism of the century, but, uh, but in a time where things are, are just constantly changing and, and you're constantly in crisis mode and just survival mode, and yet there is an organization to this and there, there are mm -hmm. people that are taking responsibilities and taking their cues from, from that leadership. Mm -hmm. so, so that's the other piece too that I heard from you is just, you know, making sure that you have that team that's able to, it's not, you don't just have a good story. You don't just have a good, a good kind of PR uh, campaign in mm -hmm. terms of, you know, hey, you know, here, I'm, I'm, I'm doing something, a great sacrifice to myself, but, but actually, there's something behind this, you know, it, mm -hmm. it's, it's, yeah, nobody's it's playing golf things. right now, or nobody, yeah, exactly, like, exactly, they're making things happen, <laughs> like, oh, it's time for, you know, a nap, um, <laughs> I have always an ironic sense of humor when I listen to what happened, and I also think it's a game changer, in so far as, um, we always look like traits of where leadership comes from and the background and the resume. And you could not find a more unorthodox background. I mean, yes, he, his history, his family survived the Holocaust, so quite compelling there. But his choice of career paths prior to this role, comedian, uh, somebody sent me a, a video of him winning a dance contest, uh, a very good, you know, like amazing dancer. So I think there's some leadership learn lessons there. And it's also a caution to any parent who's having a, you know, a, a bit of a fit saying well, my kid's an actor <laughs> my, or a comedian, how's that going to turn out for you? Apparently he's breaking the rules on that too. You know, so those art training and things, there's yeah. a lot of transferable skills and competencies of what makes a leader. But at his yeah. core, uh, the, the real substantive things have to be there. So 
So I, yeah, I have yeah. to say, but I've been like thinking about this for ages, but I couldn't come up with the right article yet. Yeah, well, it's interesting you read that out because it, it does make me think that, you know, presence is such an important skill. And, mm -hmm. you know, that's, that is definitely something that you're trained in um, as, as an actor. And, you know, you, you, you have to work on that presence and you have to work on just being completely connected with the other people in the cast, with your story, mm -hmm. with your audience, yes. you know, and, and the people around you, your team. And so again, transferring that to the, to the business world, you know, and, and leadership without that presence, without the ability to say, this is not about me, mm -hmm. this is about the greater good, you know, and again, actors do this all the time. It's about the play. It's about the story. It's not about me. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, you know, I, I'm, I'm one part of this, whether I'm the hero or not. Mm -hmm. And so, um, you know, so I, I think that kind of brings me to another point that we were discussing before we hit record here is, is the listening piece of all this, um, you know, and, and what can people do? I think that's, that's been a really challenging thing is, you mm -hmm. know, I mean, what a, last two years my goodness I mean who who, who would have thought you know coming mm -hmm. sort of out of the pandemic mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I hate to to be uh to be so uh, uh final about it but mm -hmm. uh but yeah you know you are kind of seeing the, the the light at the end of the tunnel on that front and then this happens and you know I come back to a practice that we have at narrative and that we do with our clients and yet you and I do uh which is to look at you know what's getting in the way currently of our ability to listen to other people and to ourselves and to just practice noticing what those obstacles are as opposed to forging on despite mm -hmm. the obstacles and and not really being aware of them uh, or sweeping them under the rug rather write those down speak them to another person mm -hmm. and then endeavor to let those go uh, mm -hmm. And that's the really tough part, um, and because it's 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 not about making something wrong. So if I wake up to a horrific headline, uh, like it seems to be happening every day, it's affecting the first hour of my day for sure, if not more. And because I'm thinking about it, I'm trying to get more news about it, etc. You know, I'm thinking specifically there was a a family that 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 died on a bridge as they were trying to. Uh, to escape, um, mm -hmm. and, and four people died, including two children and, and the mother of the two children, and that really affected me. There's a photograph of it, and you know, mm -hmm. it's it happened. It's real, and that you know caused a, a major obstacle in my listening as I was trying to do my work, bringing my kids to to school, and and all the other things that I do on a daily basis. But just when I stopped to notice, here's that obstacle. It's mm -hmm. something that happened in the world. It's a headline. I have that picture in my mind. And then to dig a little bit into what, why is it such an obstacle for me? And then what happened is that as I did this exercise for myself, which just takes a few minutes, I was writing this down and I became really grateful to, mm -hmm. you know, being, to living in this country, which is not at war, uh, despite mm -hmm. what a lot of people might think, but this is not war. Mm -hmm. And, you know, to, to have the life that I have, to have a roof over my head, to have a family uh, that's alive and well and thriving and healthy. And, and really, that's what I started to write down after having written down all the things that stress me out about this situation and that are really scary. And so coming out of that exercise, suddenly I'm, I'm feeling grateful and, and I can kind of move on with my day with that sort of intention that I'm now going to look at my day, everything that I look at today, I'm committing to, look at, to looking at it with gratitude. And it mm -hmm. doesn't mean that this obstacle goes away right. uh, or that at some point my listening is gonna break down because of it. But it means that when that happens, I can notice it and I can go back to that place of gratitude. So that's something I, I, I just wanted to uh, flag here for, for our listeners who may feel a lot of obstacles to listening that are, you know, not just about about this conflict, but a lot of a lot of different things that happen in life. And thank you for sharing that because last I was talking to a friend of mine offline who I, I do some writing with, and explaining that I had been contending with a family matter that I'm addressing on their behalf, and it was quite it's quite serious. And I was very emotional about the outcome of things not moving forward in a way uh, and advocacy with in the courts. And I couldn't write humor and I and I had to be realistic afterwards like 
that situation was taking up my brain and we had mm. to take a step back and just give it the respect it deserved make lists look at what action and take and then put it to the side after but until i was able to do that and let it run its not run its course but just own it and say this is not a moment to compartmentalize this and just put it away and say, oh, that's not, it wasn't. And, and then to move on and say, okay, what, what do I have control of? What do I have control of? And then I felt like more brighter inside because I was like, okay, I took charge of it. I took ownership of it. I called it what it was and not just say, oh no, just flip a switch, move to another room in your brain about what we're supposed to do next. You know, those must shoulds, you know, ought to be doing this right now. Sometimes they don't work. So I think being patient and what you're explaining and we're both talking about in different ways is the same thing that you have when you have a good coach, when there's a good therapist, you're seen, you're heard, somebody walks you through your thinking process and then suddenly the challenge is there. It doesn't get fixed sometimes overnight, but the whole process of going through that is what makes the difference. And mm -hmm. it's like a wellness exercise for your brain basically. So. So anyway, yeah. that was yeah. our thought. So thanks. We're kind of been on the same brain length of, you know, and then the fact that we have to pay attention and respect um, what's going on. I, I think it's a, it's a gift from COVID in a sense, because when I was doing talks and conferences, I saw people being much more forthcoming about the backstage in what mm -hmm. they saw in their staff's lives or their team's life, acknowledging there was a whole person, that there was experiences that were happening that they started to have to become familiar with. So mm -hmm. doing a little bit of what you've described about taking more time for the personal to allow that person, not necessarily dictating they overshare, but just acknowledge that we there's a lot we don't know sometimes behind the scenes and give that person space and time to contend with it. Mm, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, I, I, I love all of this. Um, any any other thoughts around around everything we've talked about, or things that we would want to leave our listeners with before we uh, before we we wrap up here? It's to pay attention. We're all guilty of what we're professionals. We coach, we train, but we're all guilty of the same thing. Sometimes we we the left brain takes over, and I think that reminder have some kind of cue or something that reminds us take a pause, like we've said in earlier episodes, and then go back to the basics. What I can be listening for, what am I not paying attention to? So to ask ourselves a couple of key questions and then follow our own advice afterwards, <laughs> like actually spend time in doing and not putting it off. And so those are things I think are, are worth it. But the listening part and capturing what's going on and, and being honest, these are, mm. These are major moments, so let's pay attention and then figure out what we can do to help. Yes, so yes, yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. I think I think you've described it really well. Once you've gone through that, you know, what's the action that I can mm -hmm. take that's going to be uh, helpful to me and helpful to others, uh, helpful to me in the sense that you know it, it helps me move on essentially and move forward with mm -hmm. my life as opposed to you know, staying in that place of despondency or powerlessness that uh, I, I'm sure all of us feel at any point and maybe some more than others. So um, hopefully these are things that our listeners can take on. Um, as, as I always say, they don't take much time uh, to do. All you need is either another person or a piece of paper, uh, but, but it's really worth, um, you know, taking those few minutes to look at, you know, how are you listening? What's getting in the way? And then what, you know, how could you create an intention that's going to mm -hmm. allow you to move forward and let those obstacles go? Um, for more on all of this, you yes. can definitely go to our website, narrative.com, N-A-R-A-T-I-V.com. Uh, we have a blog that's out that's exactly about these uh, concepts, uh, which you can find on our website in the blog section. And, and of course, you know, feel free to, to reach out to us uh, at any point. Um, all our details are on our website. Uh, if you want to talk about these strategies around listening and storytelling mm -hmm. and engagement and how do we, you know, how do we get back in a place of productivity uh, in, in the face of all these challenges that are going on in the world. Um, it's, not, uh, it, it, it's not so difficult. You just have to take that first step and we're always happy to help. So there you go. That's my pitch for everyone. And uh, Julianne, I want to 
thank you once again, and thanks for uh, prompting us to uh, to um, explore this topic. I thought it was really interesting, and hopefully our listeners too. Uh, so yeah, thank you, Julian. Thank you. Always a pleasure. And until next time, be safe right. and be well. Thank you, everyone. And uh, yes, I will echo that. Be safe, be well, and see you next time. Cheers. Narrative Story Talks. For more information on the narrative listening and storytelling method and how it can help your business, go to narrative.com.